the best way to reach the widest number of customers in VR will be via the web. So there are other ways to make virtual reality applications, but today we're going to be talking about virtual reality on the web. And I think that's a really powerful combination to combine the reach and the accessibility of the web with the power of virtual reality. And it's enabled by this relatively new API called WebVR, which is what we're going to take a look at today. But first, I want you all to try it out so you know what we're talking about. This is a demo from one of my colleagues called Ada. And what I'll do now, if it's OK, we have about enough cardboard for one between two or three, I think. Um, so if you wouldn't mind passing them around, and if you have a smartphone with you, please try visiting this URL. You can start now if you like, because then you can slot it into the cardboard. Metaverse.samsunginter.net. And uh, we'll just get these passed around to you. There's also one Gear VR to try, and one random glasses thing that I've not tried before, so you can see if it works or not. should switch on automatically, yeah, and uh, you can see if you can go to the web browser in there and see if you can <laughs> try that. <laughs> um, and there's one random thing there if anyone's brave enough to try it. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I should test someone who has no glasses. Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> So while you're doing that, I am also going to load this up and hope it works. Is that the square? Oh, here we go. Yeah. Okay, here you are. <laughs> so as some of you might have seen, you have yourself a little character. And as you're all joining, you should be able to look around and see each other. I have an advantage because I have a keyboard and trackpad, so I can actually move around and you all can't. Uh, but you might be able to see me moving. And hopefully you can work out the cardboard, but essentially, you once you press the little button to go into virtual reality mode, so it's this little goggles button. And once you press that, it should uh, project one image for each of your eyes, and then you can put it in your Google Cardboard and you should be able to see it in virtual reality mode. How can I center it? Because all the guys are over there. Ah, uh, <laughs> you can refresh it and you'll come back in a new position. <laughs> Um, but you should also be able to spin it around and see things from different angles. <laughs> so, has anyone got it working yeah. okay? Can you see it all right? Oh, do you need Wi Fi? Yes. I can be in that. So, um, you may need Wi Fi, which is the guest Wi-Fi, and it's guest underscore access dash Yosef's zero. So do I think? Okay. So now I also have a, a virtual stage and a virtual stage. <laughs> okay. So I'll leave you to try that out as we proceed. 
but hopefully that is an interesting demo to show that these experiences can also bring people together. There is a lot of talk about virtual reality as being an isolating experience, so you're shut off from the rest of the world. But you can also create virtual reality applications that work for many people and bring people into the same virtual space. And today, of course, we are all in the same place, actually, physically as well. But we might not be. We, you could be accessing this from another place around the world, and then you'd be in the same virtual environment. Hopefully, also, from China out, you have seen that even if you don't have the virtual reality device, so if you don't have this cardboard with lenses or another virtual reality headset, you can still see something. So if you have a device with a web browser, any modern web browser should be able to display this. Um, whether you have the immersive virtual reality experience or not depends on then if you have the virtual reality headset. But this video hopefully shares this well to show that it's not just restricting it to people who have a headset. These web virtual reality applications should work whether you have a desktop or a tablet or a mobile phone and then once you have a device you can slot it inside and then you can have the virtual reality experience as well but this is what you may be familiar of as a as web developers if you are uh, it's what we call progressive enhancement do you have a term for that in German that's different? Or, um, so we say progressive enhancement to mean that you give a baseline experience, a simple experience that works for everybody. And then if you have a, a better device, if you have a browser that has more features, more abilities, if you have a virtual reality headset with you, then you can enhance that and give a better experience as well. And this is really important to make sure that we keep the web accessible for everybody, not just for people that have high-end devices and expensive headsets. So hopefully this is something that WebVR can really contribute to virtual reality to. Okay. So WebVR, I've talked about WebVR, but what is it? It's an API, an application programming interface, it's a feature inside browsers that support it, and it gives you, as a web developer, some abilities. So the first thing is that it lets you discover the headsets that might be attached to your device. So for example, if you have put your phone inside the Gear VR headset, then WebVR lets the web application know that it has a Gear VR headset, and it is then able to launch full screen, uh, but more importantly, in Gear VR case anyway, it is able to get the sensors, sensor data from the actual headset itself. So actually with the phone inside cardboard, as you've seen, it just uses the sensors in the phone anyway, so um, it uses the accelerometer API, from, that has been an API in the, in the web world for a little while. But you could have other headsets, like imagine the HTC Vive or the Oculus Rift, that have their own sensors in the headset itself. So you need that to be able to know where people are looking. And even in the case of the HTC, HTC Vive, where you have the positional sense with the uh, cameras that detect where you are as well, so you can move around in, in the 3D space as well. So WebVR provides you that orientation and position data as well from the virtual reality headset in a cross-platform way. And it handles rendering it for you, so you don't have to worry about the different kinds of headsets and what lenses they have to be able to render that in the right way for those devices. WebVR can do that for you. So to explain that, I can show this. So First of all, when you are rendering your display for these virtual reality headsets, you will render it stereoscopically. So you have one image for your left eye and one for your right eye, 
and they will be at slightly different positions for your two eyes. And the browser with WebVR also then takes care of this, which is applying a barrel distortion so that then when you put it inside the headset with the lenses, the lens basically takes this distorted image and it wraps it around your, your vision to take up as much of your vision as possible. And there are quite a few browsers involved in this already. So as we saw with all the different virtual reality headsets, there's lots of big companies behind virtual reality now. There's also lots of big organizations and people working on browsers who are working on web VR support as well. So there's Chrome for Android um, on the left, which may be what you were trying out there if you were trying it on your device, or perhaps you were using Safari on an iPhone. There's Chromium on the desktop, so if you were using the Oculus Rift or the Vive, you may well be using Chromium, um, and there are special builds of that with web VR support in it. And I'm sure Chrome itself, the normal desktop browser, will have this support soon as well. Um, but uh, right now you can download a separate build for it. Also there's Firefox Nightly, which is that third one. So Mozilla are involved and they have support for this as well. Then there's Servo in the middle. That one, anyone know what that one is? Testing in. Yes, I was going to because I had it on the second slide. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Edge, so Microsoft are also involved in web VR. And interestingly, Microsoft are also working on having support for the HoloLens. So this at the moment is web VR, virtual reality, but uh, soon we can see this being used for, for mixed reality applications as well, which is quite exciting. And then there's the Oculus browser also on the right. So if you have the Gear, sorry, if you have the Gear VR, someone there, um, then the default browser in there will be the Oculus browser. It will, that also has our Samsung Internet for Gear VR in the library there as well, so you've got a choice of browsers on that device. So, at the moment it looks slightly complicated if you're thinking, I've got a virtual reality headset, what browser do I use for WebVR? But essentially, you can go to webvr.info, which is just hanging off the corner there, um, and it gives you these instructions. So, essentially, for each device, each headset, there are, there's at least one browser that you can use for WebVR except just the only odd one out is PlayStation VR at the moment. So we need to get persuading Sony to, to get involved. But it also is worth knowing that you don't necessarily need a browser that supports web VR to have a virtual reality experience. There is a polyfill. Do you have a different word for that, Joe? Maybe not? OK. <laughs> Uh, there's a polyfill as well, which means um, it's like a shim. Um, it means that it basically fills in the gap. So if your browser doesn't have support for it, it brings the other devices up to a similar kind of level. It gives the same kind of abilities, but just not in the same um, not the same performance. So the WebVR polyfill can do what you might been seen on your mobile phones there, it can use the data from your phone, the accelerometer data, to know which what your orientation is to where you're looking. Um, and it just can presume that you are using a cardboard display on, on mobile. Um, on desktop, it doesn't really give you a virtual reality experience because it can't launch full screen on the actual virtual reality headset. But you can still, on the desktop, use your mouse or trackpad and keyboard to move around. So, yeah, it's just worth knowing that even though not everyone has a browser that supports WebVR yet, and in some browsers it is not enabled by default, you have to switch it on. But anyone can really access these things already. So using something like a polyfill, um, you can even without a device, you can 
you can have experience uh, with the R application. So I thought I would share a little bit about the actual API itself, but maybe before I dive in, can I ask how many of you are web developers? Okay, most, most of you. And uh, how many of you are familiar with JavaScript? Okay, so I'll, I'll be gentle. I'll, uh, <laughs> but um, firstly, uh, I will just share the what the API actually gives you, and then we will get into using a couple of libraries, and it, it will get progressively higher level, so it will get a little bit easier as we go. So we'll start off with the, the low level, uh, sort of deeper bit. Um, so just to share first, the WebVR API is now 1.1, um, that was updated in September of last year, so it's been, we've been stable on version 1.1 for a while. Uh, the version that I mentioned, I mentioned HoloLens and the mixed reality work going on. So that uh, should be coming through more with version 2, which I'm not sure of the time frame on. I guess may well be a few months away. Uh, but at the moment we're on version 1 of VR. So this is the first couple of things. Can you see me in the back? Yeah. Okay, that's good. I will read it out anyway. So the first thing that you can do with these WebVR web APIs is you can say, get the VR displays. So at this point, your browser will respond with whatever virtual reality devices it detects. So for example, an Oculus Rift. And it will give you some information about that. And when you are ready, you can then call on that virtual reality display that it gives you you can say a request to present your scene that you will create in a canvas element, and you say, I want you to display that full screen on this headset. So you can say request present. And some of you may be familiar in JavaScript with request animation frame. So this is an API that we've had for a while now in the regular browsers, so mobile and desktop. And what it means is that you have a way to hook in, so you have a way to be called from the browser when the browser is ready to paint the next frame of the scene. But virtual reality needs something, it needs an extension of that because Unlike on mobiles and desktops where it tops out at 60 frames a second, so the browser has a limit of 60 frames per second, you, you won't have animation happening faster than that. But in the world of virtual reality where everything needs to be very low latency, it needs to be very fast, otherwise we might make people sick, which we don't want to do. Hopefully none of you are feeling ill after the cardboard earlier. Then we want to display at potentially 90 hertz, 90 frames per second, or even greater. So there's a new request animation frame method that WebVR gives you. And when you are ready to submit each frame, so with each uh, advance of the animation, you can call submit frame on the VR display. Couple more things. It gives you the eye parameters. So for the particular headset, and depending on user configuration perhaps, it can give you the offset for your eyes, so the distance between your eyes, and the particular dimensions to render at for this display. Um, so this lets you then construct the right stereoscopic scene for whatever device it is. And you can also get the frame data. So this is how what I was saying about being able to get the data around the accelerator, accelerometer, so your orientation and your position. Uh, this is what WebVR gives you. So we have so far really been talking about the bottom two things here. So this is a, 
a stack of building blocks for building a web VR application. So if you want to actually have a virtual reality experience on the web, you will need a VR headset. And then the step above that is you will need a web browser with web VR support, or you will need that web VR polyfill that I mentioned. The next thing you will need is support for WebGL, which is the web graphics library, which uh, I think has been around since about 2012. And it's graphics library that lets you do 3D graphics and 2D as well, fast graphics processing on the web. So this is what you use to actually create your 3D scene using WebGL and you will output it on a canvas only. But thankfully, we don't actually have to look at WebGL in detail today because it is very low level, very detailed, very uh, tricky really, unless you have a background in 3D graphics, something like OpenGL, uh, and then it should be quite familiar. But for most of us who are web developers, we can look at a higher level and an abstraction above it and use a library that helps us. So the two that I'm going to talk about today are 3GS and A-Frame. And the reason they are stacked on top of each other like this is that A-Frame actually uses 3GS. Um, so we're going to have a look at each of them in turn. But it's just worth knowing that this dotted line is optional. So you don't necessarily have to use these libraries. You don't have to use a library at all. You could use different libraries. But these are good choices that I think and very popular. Um, so there's many developers and probably most of the developers doing web VR have you seen one of these two. So 3GS. Has anyone used 3GS before? <laughs> okay. Just a few, just a few. So it's very neat. It's been around for a few years. And uh, it was originally written by a developer called, who calls himself Mr. Du, um, from Spain, I believe. And it has a big community behind it now. And if you were to go to 3gs.org, you would see there are many, many examples there and many cool demos. And I guess the thing that ties them together, generally speaking, is that most of these are 3D graphics on the web. But I thought I would show you one. And I picked one up before, let's see. Uh, that's one to show in a minute. This, there was a, uh, uh, what was this one? Oh, let's just try this one. I actually picked out a, uh, a Porsche one for you. You see, I was thinking that I was in the right country, but now I'm not in the right country because this is forward, so I apologize. And I haven't tried this one before, so I don't know what it's going to be like, but we can give it a try. Uh, let's try this. So sometimes these take a little while to load because they are downloading a lot of graphics and a lot of textures, and they're quite detailed. But, ooh, is that audio? Ooh, ooh. Huh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, okay. Well, I'm not sure how to use this one, but at least you can see from it that this is pretty neat that you can do this in the web browser and it's just a URL that you can go to and it's nice 3D graphics. So this is not a virtual reality demo, um, but it's using 3GS that we can use to create the, the scene to, to render this this scene for that we could then use in virtual reality as well. Okay. So I wanted to share some code. Hopefully that'll be okay. <laughs> and share just a very basic 3GS demo. Um, so if you want to get started with 3GS, the sort of hello world um, is to just create some object that animates. So we're going to make a spinning cube. So I thought I would do this 
live actually, just to show you that there's nothing extra going on. Um, but I will have to sort of put the microphone down, so I'll try and speak loudly. Or just lean over the microphone. <laughs> um, so, I have a starting template, uh, which is a blank page at the moment, of course, because at the moment it just has this inside. So, if you're familiar with HTML, this is just a standard single page. The only thing that we've got here is that we've got um, a script pulling in 3GS, and we have set two variables already, just the width and the height, which is defined to the width and height of the page. So now we can start adding, adding in our code from the slides here. So let's pull this in, and I'll explain what it does as we go. So first of all, is it big enough? I can make it a little bit bigger. There we go. So first of all, this line. So this says to 3GS that we want to render out a scene using WebGL. And this just sets it up. So then we have a renderer that we can say, OK, now we want to render our scene at this particular width and height that we get from the width and height of the page. And then we can output into our page the DOM element, so the canvas element that the renderer spits us out. So this is the first stage. And if we were to save that and look at that, uh, we see a difference, but only that it's gone from a white page to a black page. But we're making progress. So, <laughs> so next, I'm going to copy this in and show you what this does. So let's do part two. So now, we've got a few things here. So one thing is that we need to set up a scene. So this is basically representing the actual scene that we're going to be displaying and it's where we'll put each of our objects inside. So we create one of those and then we create a camera because this camera and where it's positioned in the scene will determine what's actually displayed. So it's like setting where our eyes are in, within this scene so we can move the camera around and the scene will move around accordingly. And we set the position of the camera, the Z index. So uh, you have the X and the Y axis and also the Z index coming out into 3D space. And this is to set the camera back a bit from the scene. And then we add the camera to the scene here. So if we were to look at that now, it's still just a blank page, but that's okay. Because next, we're going to add a cube. So let's paste this in. So our cube, as always, all uh, objects, visible display objects in 3GS, it's made up of two things. One is the geometry. So this defines the actual shape which is our box geometry. And this is the width and height and depth. So because it's a cube, it's 50, 50, 50. And then you also have a, a mesh, uh, sorry, a material. Um, and so this means what to apply over the shape, basically what to paint that shape as. So in this case, we just say, hey, color red. So we should get a red cube. And then we add our cube to the scene as well. And if we add our cube and we refresh, we get nothing. But that's OK, because <laughs> we haven't done one more thing, which I'm going to steal off the next slide, actually, uh, just quickly, which is this. So we then need to make sure that we render the scene. So we just say on the renderer, render our scene from the point of view of the camera. Now if we do that, 
Yeah, I'm you. Yeah. But it's just this square. <laughs> <laughs> so what we're going to do next is animate it. And so I'll copy this in. There we go. So what this is going to do is, I mentioned earlier this request animation frame. So uh, here is that. Um, this says to the browser, every time you're ready to update the scene, update the frame, call this method animate. And so each time this is called, we update the rotation of our cube. So this is the Y rotation, so it's the rotation around the Y axis, so it'll be like that. And then it will just re-render it each time. So if we do that, and then animate, we just call once at the bottom to kick it off the, the first time. And then we should see a spinning cube. <laughs> Oh, yes, you're, you're still not impressed, are you? Okay, we'll get to better demos. <laughs> um, but hopefully you can see from this small example that it's quite, it's a few lines, but it's pretty easy to start creating 3D scenes for the web with JavaScript. Um, this is not a massive scene, but it's quite simple to get started anyway. So, if we wanted to go from there and actually make this a virtual reality scene, because at the moment it's just a 2D display of a 3D scene in our browser, then we would need to add some additional stuff. I haven't filled in all of this because we're going to see how to do it in some simpler ways in, in a moment. But if you did want to do that, you can use some uh, additional things that you can get with 3GS. So you can add VR controls, and that will then give you the ability to look around the scene. Um, and if you have a mobile phone, just to move your phone around, and the scene will update accordingly. And also the VR effect, which will apply that stereoscopic um, view that I was talking about. So this will this will uh, actually give you a virtual reality scene by giving you the left eye and the right eye. So you can do all of this, and you can do WebVR with 3GS. And there are actually quite a few 3GS demos uh, that are exactly that. So if you were to look down at 3GS or examples, um, you'll see there's a bunch of demos for WebVR there. Um, and I think I've got sharing one on the next slide, yeah. So, to share where we would get to if we worked a little bit more on our red spin cube. And because you know, I know you weren't that really impressed by the red cube, so uh, <laughs> if we took it a little bit further and we added some more cubes and some more rectangles even of different colours, ooh, then whoa, that's kind of crazy. <laughs> Let's refresh that. That's better. <laughs> then we might have something like this 3GS demo here, which is interactive cube. So you can also tap and it starts throwing out blocks. Um, but because we don't have a VR display here, we can't actually look around in the scene. Um, they are not using the web VR polyfill, which, and they haven't added in this example the keyboard controls. So. Um, I can click, but I can't move around. But this shows you um, what you could do with 3GS if you uh, had a bit more. And of course, if you did have a virtual reality headset, then, then you could press the full screen button and you could launch it full screen uh, in virtual reality mode. But next, I want to talk about A-Frame, which was that one that came above 3GS earlier on. Um, because A-Frame is, I think, very exciting. It's newer than 3GS. It's based on 3GS, though, so it uses 3GS underneath. But this is, a, I think, a great way to get started with WebVR. And if you don't ever look again at the WebVR API and you don't ever look again at 3GS, then uh, that's fine if you don't want to, because um, you could use something like A-Frame, and it's very simple to use. And uh, hopefully you'll see from this that it's quite neat. So 
let, they, let's again do a little uh, scene and let's live code it, or live copy and paste it. Uh, <laughs> so let's have a look at our Slack template. So again, we have a blank page. Um, but the code looks like this. Okay, so again, uh, you can see that it's just a HTML page. The only thing is that we've got an A-frame script in there. And then we can do this. So we're going to copy in a little bunch of things here, um, but I will explain what each of these things does. So I guess the first thing is you can see that this is just actual HTML. It's HTML inside the HTML page. And the way this works is it uses the custom elements API. So browsers now, they, or for quite a while, actually for eight, since HTML5, they, you haven't had to stick to necessarily the, uh, the certain HTML5 tags that they provide you. You can come up with your own as well. Um, so this uses that. And what this is, is first of all, you have a, a scene, a scene, and this, uh, corresponds to the 3GSC object that you saw earlier. So this defines our whole 3 d scene. And then inside that, we put a few things. So this time, we're going to go even beyond just a cube. We're going to have a sphere, and a box, and a cylinder, and a plane, all in one. Okay. So firstly, we've got a sphere, and you can see that each of these, again, is just an HTML element. And they have certain attributes on them that define uh, the properties of them. So this one, we set the position. And these are just x, y, z uh, coordinates. And a radius and a color for our sphere. And then it's basically the same for the others. We've got the same for the box, the same for the cylinder. The plane, we've got a rotation of minus 90, so um, this is x, y, z again, so it's rotating it around the x axis, so I think by default the plane would be up like that, so we make it minus 90 to, I think go that way or that way, I can't remember. Um, yeah. And we set the width and height for our plane, which is going to be our floor and the color. And also, we get to define the sky, which is the, the surrounding of the uh, of the actual scene, and we can set a color for that as well. So if we do that, and we refresh, oh no, let's close that. Let's close that. This one. Okay, now we have a tiny green bar <laughs> because that's our position. But our scene is actually here. Um, it's around here, and the neat thing is, hopefully you can see that just from those few lines of HTML, we've already got everything else set up for us. We can click and drag around, and we can move around with the keyboard. Ooh, there's our sphere. Yeah. Um, and it even gives us the virtual reality ability, so we've got that little goggles icon in the corner that you might not be able to see. Um, and if you click on that, then it goes full screen, and if you're on a mobile device, it would do the stereoscopic view. And if you had the virtual reality headset, then you'd go into virtual reality mode. And that was all just from us writing those few lines to describe our scene. So it's a way of uh, a declarative, is that a good word? Um, declarative way of, of uh, writing web VR scenes. So, there's one more thing we will add, because at the moment, when you load this up, you're in a bit of a weird place. So we can add a camera, and we can put wrap that inside an entity that defines its position. Um, so there's a kind of technical reason why you don't add the position on the camera itself, um, because that position gets updated, I think, then when you're using the mouse and keyboard and things. So we, you just wrap it in another entity and put the position on that. And then if we do that, then, yeah, that's a bit better. You get to see our scene from a nice angle. So 
we've seen how to make a 3D scene in 3GS and a 3D scene in A-Frame. And the 3D scene in A-Frame is virtual reality ready. Um, if you still have a couple around, if you want to just try it out, although it's probably not as exciting as the other one, <laughs> bit.ly slash A-Frame slash basic. Uh, just go to the next slide. Um, so next, how are we doing for time? Okay, all right. So I want to show you another example. So I think we're done with simple geometries now, right? We're kind of sick of cubes and spheres, aren't we? So I thought we'd make a carousel, and the carousel would contain images of llamas for no other reason than I like llamas. <laughs> And these llama images are going to be pulled in dynamically from Flickr. So hopefully they'll be okay images. Nothing will be better. Um, so uh, this time I'm not going to copy and paste everything in, but I'll share the key pieces of it. And then just pull out the, the one I did made earlier at the end. Um, so, at this point, I'm going to introduce a new concept in A-Frame called components. So components actually correspond to the attributes that you have on the elements. So uh, you saw earlier where we had the elements and then we had attributes for things like position and rotation. Those are actually provided by components. So we, we call it an entity component architecture. And you can write your own components, and you can reuse them on different elements, and you can share those components with other people, and there's a whole world of components out there already that people have made and are sharing on GitHub and things like that. So this particular one, we are using one called the layout component, which gives us the ability to stay on here on our entity, lay out the child elements of this element, in a particular way. And in this case, so we're saying on our container for these images, carousel, <coughs> we want to display these images in a circle of a radius of three. And the next thing we want to do is we want to make all of those images face me in the middle of the scene. And an easy way to do that is by using the look at component because then we get to say on each element, look at the position 0, 0, 0, which is the center point where I use around. And then that handles rotating them all in the right way to face me. And also here, this is what we're going to do for each image that we get back from Flickr. We'll say generate image. So before we saw that, we were actually defining each element using HTML. But we can also create elements with JavaScript as well. And you can do that to do more dynamic things, as we're doing here. So we're creating these elements dynamically. And it's neat because A-Frame will just be listening to any changes in the DOM and update the scene appropriately. So we can create an image element, and we can append it in our container that has the layout. But we want something else as well. We want to be able to click or tap and have the carousel rotate around, because that's what carousels do, right? So if we were to have a, a predefined, pre-canned animation that we knew exactly where it was to start and finish, we could just do this. So this is the easy way to do animations in A-Frame. You can use an animation element and you can define in its properties when this animation will start, so we can say when we click on something, and we can say what it's going to affect. So you put this inside the element you want to animate, and then you say, I want this to update its rotation to a particular value, so, so a Y rotation value. So this will spin it 360 degrees, and it will do that over a duration of a thousand, which is milliseconds. So in one second, it will spin 360 degrees. And Phil Fors is about saying uh, 
what to do at the end of the animation. So it just proceeds to the end and stops there, as opposed to restarting or anything like that. So we could do that, but then in our case, we actually don't know uh, where the start and the end rotation will be straight away for each element, because they're all going to spin around, so the rotation values are all going to be updating over time. So instead, we actually do something a bit like this, which is going a little bit deeper, but there's a library called TweenJS, and again, this is another library that's been around for quite a while in the JavaScript, but it gives you an ability to do really nice animations. Um, it gives you the ability to do things like easing, so you can have something start off slow, a bit faster, and then slow down again. And um, it has lots of different uh, ways that you can do that, lots of different options. So it's quite nice, and A-Frame has it inbuilt. Like A-Frame is built on top of 3GS, it also has tween.js inside it. And so we can do something like this and just say, um, we want to tween this object's rotation to this particular value. And because this is dynamic now, we get to just pass it in a variable for our target rotation. And then we can call start on that when we're ready to start it. So if we do all of that, then we've got one more thing to do. <laughs> we want to add the sky as well. So before, you saw a sky, but we just set it to a particular color. But you can also set the sky to be an image, a 360 degree image. And the way this is done is you don't just fill out a source here directly. You point it to an ID inside an assets element. And the reason for that is because A assets is a nice thing that A frame gives you to handle optimizing of asset loading. So if you put it in there, then A-Frame will know once the assets are loaded, it will know that the scene's ready, everything will kick off nicely. Um, and then we just reference that and say that's what we want to use for our sky. So I think that's everything to create our Flickr carousel. And so now we have this. Ready. Uh, that's the an album called, called Llama Files, in case you want to I'm not sure what that one's about. Uh, but, yes, so we have our scene, we have our sky, which is made up from this 360 degree image, we have our 360 degree uh, carousel here that we can drag around as normal. Also, we can click on those and it spins around using our animation as well. <laughs> That's a good one. Um, so, we have created an interactive virtual reality scene now. So, if you did want to try it out, uh, you can go to bit.ly slash aframe dash carousel and uh, you can see what that might look like. So, but if you would like to go through a tutorial yourself, in your own time at home. My colleague Ada, again, has put together an interactive tutorial at samsunginter.net slash a-frame-tutorial. And it's a good way to just step through step by step. Um, it goes through setting up similar kinds of scenes. Um, and if you're stuck at any point, you can just say load this step, um, and then you can carry on. So that's a good one to try out. So at this stage, I wanted to share some more examples. Here's another one by my colleague Ada again. Um, she made a frame racer. So this is showing how you can have a pretty nice 3D scene and you can create things more like games. This is all just made with a frame um, and she has the controls. I think if you have the hair, if you're using the carbon, I think you can just tilt your head and rotate, um, and you can tap to move forwards, and um, you can fall off the edge. <laughs> and uh, Ada also made the shader component to um, make the uh, animation on the water here, so this is pretty neat. 
je l'ai acheté. Bubble is, uh, again, from one of my colleagues, Diego, and I think this is quite a neat one you might like to use sometime, because if you ever have a 360 photo, let's just look that. If you ever have a 360 degree photo, so if you have something like a gear 360 camera, or you have friends who have a 360 degree camera, then you might have this nice 360 degree image, but how do you share that with someone else? Um, before you might have said, oh, download this 360 photo view app, and then once you've got that, I'll email you the image and then you can use that. And it's too much hassle. So the nice thing about WebVR is you can just send someone a link. Um, and so this Samsung Internet dot slash bubble, you can go select an image and you can uh, pull in a 360 degree image from your local files on your mobile or your desktop. And this is one I made earlier when I had the for good fortune to go to Hollywood. That's a Hollywood sign. That's me. <laughs> and and um, this is just by adding at the end of Samsung Internet slash bubble, you just add pick, e pick equals and then the URL of your image and it will load that in for you. So if you just put your image anywhere, post it anywhere, you can then just construct a link that you just go to and it loads up with your 360 image in it. So it's nice to share. Another interesting one that again Diego made, uh, which I loaded up, yes, I loaded up. Um, so this is just an example of mashing up different web APIs. So combining different things together, and you can create new and interesting things. So uh, this is called WordDrop, and I will try it out, and we'll see if it works. Um, but it uses voice recognition using the speech recognition API, and it should, if it all works well, pull my words into the page and animate them. So let's see. Uh, so now I'm not sure what I'm going to say. Hello, web virtual reality. Ooh. So there we go. Um, so we can see this one is maybe not quite so practical, but it is an interesting demo, I think, and it shows that I think voice control will be important for virtual reality as well because it can be a good way to navigate around when when uh, voice detection becomes good enough. Um, it could be a good way to access certain features and say certain commands that is easier than necessarily doing taps and swipes and clicks and everything, especially when you've got the headset on. A slightly more real world example, so this is not by us, this is by uh, another company, um, but some of you may know of a, a 360 degree video uh, company called Within. They have had a native app for a while for videos, but they also recently launched a web VR version as well. Um, so this uh, is like you've seen before, a web VR scene, and you can access videos in there, and you can play them, and you can then watch these immersive videos in 360 degrees. So this one is a, a, a hot air balloon launch. And so I think this is quite a nice example. Uh, one more car one. <laughs> Again, this is uh, Renault though. Wow. <laughs> um, so this is another neat example, I think, to show how companies are embracing this now and using them um, maybe not as a major website that they're investing in huge amounts of, but certainly it's really powerful as a, a marketing tool and um, it can help get a bit more attention. Um, oh. Um, 
Yeah, so you can see that you have a really nice scene of your car here. And if you're in virtual reality, you can feel like you are actually immersed in your car and get to experience it in a, in a much better way than just seeing a series of images or something as you might have seen uh, before. And then the last demo I want to share is the, uh, this, this resemblance to any other game names is just purely coincidental, by the way. Um, it's called Whackman, and uh, again, Diego made it. And let's just load it up. So this is an interesting demo, I think, for, well, showing another game. There's some nice animations in it, so I'll get this um, and you can run around by pressing the keys. Um, and if you have the headset on, you could be looking around and seeing where the ghosts are coming from um, while you're moving. Oh, uh, no! <laughs> um, but I think one of the really nice things about this is that, like I was saying before about mixing different web APIs together and having interesting things happen, um, one of the things that Diego's done is had gamepad support using the HTML5 Gamepad API. So if you are to connect, if you have a controller, um, a Bluetooth controller, for example, that you can you can connect this with your mobile phone, and you can have the virtual reality headset on, and then you can be using your Gamepad to control these web VR experiences. So again, it could be a lot nicer than having to tap up here on, on the cardboard or the QBR. Um, so it's uh, potentially a nice add-on to these web VR apps. Also, just to mention that some of these uh, headsets have different kinds of controllers. The Daydream has a controller with it. And we've also just brought out with our new QBR the QBR controller as well. And this will be something you'll be able to use in virtual reality and in web VR as well. Um, so we'll work on a demo for this and, and share it soon. So we've uh, covered a bit of ground today, but if you wanted to try things out and think about where to go from here, some suggestions are that that you could look at physics and gaming engines. So, for example, the word drop where the words are falling down and jumping around. It's quite easy to plug in a physics library and uh, start having physics effects as well. Um, and also web audio gives you the ability to have 3D spatial audio, so um, this can really help to make your scenes feel more immersive as well. You can have audio emanating from um, the right sources, and actually A-Frame makes it really easy because you can attach an audio source to a particular element in your scene and it will know to uh, reject that from the right place. Or just come up with something cool and new that you can think of. So I think that is an exciting era for the web. As web developers we can go now from creating websites to creating whole worlds that are just from our imagination. So what will you create? If you have some ideas, you might like to join our virtual, this is a virtual as in remote, <laughs> VR hackathon, which we're running now. Um, I think it ends in June, and um, Ada's been organizing it. Um, and if you would like to sign up then uh, you can go to bit.ly VR Hackathon 2017 and we can help support you if you uh, need some help. We've started inviting developers into our Slack group so we are uh, responding to people's questions and uh, we're really interested to see what people come up with. And we're on all of your favourite social networks. Um, please get in touch if there's anything that we can do. And uh, I think that's about it. Thank you very much. <laughs>